Hey, it's Aaron from GameEnthusiast.com, and today I'm checking out School of Sorcery from Stephen Finn, published by Dr. Finn's Games. Uh, School of Sorcery is a two-player, dice-rolling, uh, magic crystal-waging, bluffing game. And I mentioned this for two players. Uh, ages 14 and up. Uh, plays in about 40 minutes. That's pretty accurate. This is not anywhere in the manual or the, or the rule book, but basically you're a very shallow person and you are collecting magical items to befriend wizards to gain influence in the school of sorcery. I literally am just reading most of the words under school of sorcery on the back of the box. But you know, I add the part about being shallow just because apparently you're under the impression that magical items will help you make friends. And I just want to say that it's about who you are as a person, not about the, the material objects or the magical objects that you have. Okay, I'm gonna jump off this soapbox, open up this box. I'm gonna get into some school sorcery. So this is essentially what a setup would look like. One player is gonna be orange or the player is going to be blue. And each player has a set of cast cards. They're all, they both have the same set. These come into play when you're casting these gems, sort of like bidding on cards that are gonna be laid out here. And the cards correspond to a die. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. A portal card starts off next to the six die area. And then on subsequent rounds, a portal card will move up. I believe until it gets right before one and then it comes back down to, to six. You have your player boards here, which also are guides for how to play. So I tell you all the steps, take five crystals, cast crystals, use portals, activate powers, evaluate locations. These are reroll tokens. These will allow you uh, once per round, I guess, per turn to reroll any number of dice that you have. The cast cards. Uh, this is where the bluffing comes into play because this cast card, for example, allows you to place two gems on a certain card, on a card you want. This one allows you to place three. This one does absolutely nothing. This is where the bluffing comes into play because you might put this down in front of a, one of your die that you've rolled to make your opponent think that you're going for something when you're not. These two allow you to flip the die over to the value on the opposite side, which come in handy. So if you really wanna put something higher, if you wanna be in a different position, you could do a one. So if you play this with a one, you would really be flipping it over and putting it at the six position. Those are how all the, the casting cards will work. That'll make more sense in a second. Like I said, orange and blue are the same exact cards. The cars themselves, the ones that you're sort of making wages for. So some of the cars have different colors. So green, green cars are cards that will activate immediately when played. Yellow cards are cards that are one-time use. And red are permanent cards. And cars have the same basic structure. In the upper right corner, you see a number. That's the number of victory points. This is your tracker as well. That's how you track your scoring for cars you obtain. This card, cars always have the victory points in the upper right. And in the upper left, they have the number of gems or stones that are required to win it. And then the minimum margin between the different gems. So the sacred stone needs at least four gems on it to be one, but then you have to have two more than your opponent in order to win it. So if you both had four on it, somebody would need to go up to six in order to win the card. Cards have different effects, like cards that have names on them, like Bequimby the Sorcerer, that's quite the name, Bequimby. Uh, score as many victory points and take as many crystals as characters you have. This means you ha you'd have to have other cards as well. So you, Dr. Nakagawa, the magician, very similar. So if you have both of these cards, you would score two victory points. So Ambrosia here, take two crystals if your opponent has more victory points. Kind of nice. The portal card, which allows you to essentially warp to other cards. What you do is you start off by taking you take all the red cards all the permanent action cards so you shuffle up all the red cards i'm going to deal two face up to both players then take the rest of the remaining red permanent cards and shuffle them back into the rest of the deck okay so the victory points you start the game off with are dependent upon what the victory points of the two red cards you start off with so everybody has two so both players are gonna start off at two. The oldest player will go first and they're, they're gonna get the, the wizard token here to begin. 
Oh, so everybody gets three reroll tokens. They have their die. They have their cards. Uh, an expansion. Let me explain the um, the School of Sorcery Wizard Constellation Pack. So in an instance where you have on a car where you've been placing your gems on it and someone else wins it, you have the option of taking one of these five cards for the cost of an additional gem from your supply. You Every round you get five unless a card tells you to do differently. And if you don't, anything that's unused can be carried forward. So you would set these five cards up, face up, and basically you're kind of borrowing them. Phase five is the evaluate location phase where you evaluate who's won what. As I said, if your opponent has more wins a car that you have gems on, you can spend an additional gem to take one of these cards. So you can you can use one of the constellation cards during phase four, which is the activate powers phase, instead of using one of your permanent red card powers. After you use it, uh, it goes back face down. So these are all like one time. Once somebody gets one, it's a one time use. So I'm not really gonna be playing with it, but I didn't want to show you what the expansion is. We did play with these uh, just for spacing purposes for this video, but I just want to show you what the expansion is. So let's see. Well, the pack, it's the constellation pack. So it makes sense. Constellation, you didn't get anything. You get a little something. If only one player put a crystal onto the portal that round, they could then take that crystal and put it on any other card. That's how the portal works. If both players had crystals on the portal, they would basically obstruct the other player from seeing for the card or their hand, turn a single die to the location one through to to the location where they they want their crystal to go and then that's how that will be settled let's go over what uh the blue players permanent abilities are magic stone which is add a crystal to location three and or four if you have fewer crystals there that's nice and they have panacea which is take one reroll token if you ever have two or fewer tokens nice you can always kind of get one that's kind of cool Orange player has um, Geiger's ring. I don't know, Geiger's ring. Roll two dice and remove an opponent crystal from each die location. That's me. You can do that every, you can choose one of these every time you get to like phase four, which is activate powers. You can just, like I said, you can choose one. You can't do both unless the car lets you do more than one, which I think is in here. Another one is sacred stone, which is add a crystal to location two and or five if you have fewer crystals there. Then we got the basics here. So now we're going to put down the cards that we're trying to, to win. And this will just go over here. With Fireball worth two, Magic Pendant worth one, Cauldron worth two, the Cup of Jamshid worth three, and Nimsy uh, is a character card. So you need multiple of those in order to have it really be worth anything. So the only worth stuff if, if you already have other character cards in your out in front of you because all cards are, are played pretty much face up. You can see what everybody has. So everybody's going to take five crystals, which is step one. Okay. Whoa, that one was really excited to get over there. Blue and orange are going to roll. Okay, so here's how you make decisions. So as you can see, you can see the pip values that each player has. So if I was the blue player, uh, I have three, five, and six. I really want four. That kind of stinks. So if I want four, because this is next to four, see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Makes sense. So this is, this is four. So I'm probably going to want to play for my three. I'm probably going to want to play and you keep these secret. So these, you just put face down. I'm gonna play that one. Um, six, now keep in mind, you have five total. So I just put down the two flip dice ones. So I only have three left. You can also only play three cards. So if I wait, if I bluff on this one, then, you know, that's kind of a waste of a card at this point. I could go for the portal. I'll do this one, cause I can do one and then this, really becomes a two. 
that makes sense. So that's what the blue player would do. Now let's see, the orange player has two, three, and six. Hmm. They're going to want the Cup of Gem Shed as well. So they're probably going to play their two gem flip on the two. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, on the three. Flip it over to the four to get two gems onto the Cup of Gem Shed because it's worth three points. They're going to go for three on the six, which is the portal. And now they've used their five. There are some stipulations in the rules about if you bet more than you have, you kind of have, you're kind of at the mercy in terms of decision making on your opponent. It's probably best to avoid that, I think. So I'm just going to use the bluff on two. Well, they will both just reveal what they have. So they're betting nothing on two. Uh, they're betting. Uh, oh, sorry. They're betting two on four, which is a nice way to sort of trick your opponent. You know what your opponent has, but it's interesting how you can sort of dupe people in that way. Uh, let's see. Let's do that. So they're going to do two on. This is the flip over one. So I'm going to do two on fours as well. They're going to do one on two because of the of this. And that's that. So they and then they're both going for the six. And look at that. So three on the portal and they're putting two on the portal. Okay, so now we use the portal. We both have to just sort of take a die and decide where we want to go. It's fairly obvious we're both going to want to go. We would hide it, yada, yada, yada. We both pick five, obviously. And then we both go to five. That's not gonna, oh, okay, that's interesting. So there's a lot of gems on five because it's worth three points. It's not going anywhere quite yet. So we use portal, we activate power. So I can pick one of mine. Uh, so I'm gonna use magic stone, which is add a crystal to a location three and or four, if you have fewer crystals there. I have fewer crystals here. So I'm gonna just, these you can add from the supply when it use the permanent ones. You don't have to add from what you might have left over. So I'm going to add one for that one. I'm going to use Giga's ring and is roll two dice and remove an opponent's room and remove an opponent crystal from each die location. Okay. Okay. We already resolved the portal. So one in six blue has no, has no crystals on one and none on six. So that's kind of a bust, but it was worth a shot. Probably hoping you got, four so that way you could remove some of the blues and we activated powers and now we evaluate, evaluate locations so for magic pendant there's blue has one crystal on it you need at least three with a margin of one that's going to stay there's none here cup of gem shed is real popular we both have five on it so we clearly met what we needed to in terms of the minimum for the card but neither one of us have a two a two crystal margin, so it's gonna stick around, and then everything else is gonna stick around here. So we reveal. So they're not putting anything at one. I'm putting three on four, because why would I not? This can happen simultaneously, so that's why I'm doing it this way. They're gonna put three at number one. They're gonna put one on number six, and I'm doing nothing, but I still have one left. I can carry over to the next round. Comes in handy. I still have one there, and they're gonna put two on number two. Thus meeting the requirement of having three on it, three crystals on it with a margin of one, which they clearly have. All right, use portal. I'm the only one who has anything on the portal, so I'm gonna go ahead and be a jerk. 
And I could be a jerk and get this and kind of rain on their parade a bit. But maybe I let them keep that one and I come in here. I don't know. Um, I'll probably be a jerk and, and do that, but in real life, but I'll just put it on the number one. Oh, they're going to get that one. I'm getting, I already know I'm getting three. They're getting one and I'm messing them up to potentially get, Ooh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, they're in a good situation here. If I put one here, they meet the requirement of four with a margin of one. Hmm. I'll probably just put it here. Tying them, thus eliminating their chance of getting that one. They're still on the way, but maybe there's a chance. Get that one. So activate the portal. Let's activate powers. Um, I haven't used a reroll token yet, so I can't really use Panacea. Uh, add a crystal to three or four if you have fewer crystals there. So I can add a crystal to three or four. So I add one to that. Why not? Uh, they're going to use, I can add a crystal to two or five. They're probably going to add a crystal. Oops. They're probably going to add a crystal. Use sacred stone and add a crystal to two, thus giving them a margin of one. Powers have been activated by your locations. You need at least four. There's only three here. You need at least three with a margin of one. Orange is going to get this one, but because this has a margin of one, I get to keep one because I lost it. And these are going to go back into the supply. Now, had we been playing with the constellation pack, this would have been a time where I could have spent one that I have I have to spend one that you have to get one of these, these cards and then use it one time during the activate powers phase instead of using one of my red cards. That, that's when those would come into play. All right, this isn't met yet. This has been met by a long shot. So I have, I have eight to five. There's clearly a margin of two. I win this one. Orange gets to keep two. Because I have a margin of two. These go back over here. All of these go here. Oops, I should have taken this too. So now they have this in front of them. Oh, magic pendant says take one crystal for each character you have. Orange doesn't have any, so it doesn't do anything, fortunately. Uh, oh, so yep, I get the cup, the cup of gem shit, which is green. So it activates immediately, which says add one crystal to any location. Uh, Add it to the cauldron. Everything would move up. I believe that's how that's supposed to work. And then I would fill in the, the newly empty spaces with other things. Now, see, Book of Fate is worth three. Opponent must return one crystal from personal supply. That's green, so it just happens that one time. And because I got three more victory points. I'm up to five now and they got one. They're up to three because I have more victory points. I would still remain first player. This is in front of me. And then you would do this again until someone reaches 13 victory points. The moment someone reaches 13 victory points, the game ends and they, and they've won. So it's a race to get to 13. By the game, it, it feels it's I like the pace of it is quick. You don't have a whole lot of time to decide what you're doing. You got to just do the best you can do. Get those victory points race to get to 13. It's a quick, tight two player game. That's what I like about it. Um, I think I like the components. The crystals feel really nice. I like the art. Um, I don't know. I, like that. I think the cards iconography all makes a lot of sense. You know, three going towards a card, one going towards a card. No, that's nothing. That's nothing. It's it all really comes together quite well. I do appreciate these to sort of help help you see, you know, what you're going for and what it is. So, yeah, I like it. 
things I don't like. Sometimes it can feel a little unfair if somebody gets a really powerful pair of cards that they can activate. Now keep in mind for the most part you can only do one uh, power at a time, but there are, is a card that lets you do more than one. But I don't know, everything feels unfair when you're not getting what you want, be it big or small. So not a big deal. I think I really dislike about it. I think the components are I like the fact that your actual scoring tracker also is a player guide telling you what the steps are if you you know if you're forgetting or you're lost. I used it during this video. It it really comes in handy. Yeah, the game is fun. I really like it. I think uh Steve Finn did a great job with it. Uh yeah, if you like really if you like tight, you know, 30, 40 minute two player games, not a lot of extra stuff in it, just gets right to the point. You know, mechanically sound, not a lot of fluff. I highly recommend School of Sorcery. It's a lot of fun. These crystals feel really nice. Gotta say, let's listen to the sound. Listen, it's beautiful. Listen, 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 listen. Don't you just love it? So yeah, that is School of Sorcery from Dr. Finn's Games. Uh, another winner from, from Steve Finn in my book. So, yep, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, all that kind of stuff. You know how it goes. That's it. Take care. Wear a mask. Be blessed.